Many people who decide to take the plunge into the world of VR will probably put in at least some research into the headsets available to them at any one time. Usually this will mean looking online at specifications of VR headsets within their price range. Of course this applies to many types of other technology too, and just like all those other types of technologies, it's not always the case that VR headset spec sheets will tell the whole story. There are a multitude of factors to consider when choosing a VR headset, and deciding if one is better for you over another. Screen resolutions, refresh rates and tracking systems are all usually listed, but many factors aren't, or they don't have comfortable quantitative figures which can be associated with them on a spec sheet. In this video I want to explore a few of these maligned attributes of VR headsets, which in some cases can be overlooked and yet make all the difference to a user's experience, in some cases making or breaking a VR headset's usability entirely. So let's take a look. Immersed Robot Hello everyone, welcome to Immerse Robot. So I've got a number of bullet points I want to hit on regarding the various attributes of VR headsets, which are often not listed or ignored on VR spec sheets, and sometimes in reviews too. Now these are just a few bullet points that I want to get to and I may ramble a little bit in places, but I think these attributes are extremely important and the more VR headsets I use, the more important I think they are. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is glare. Now, glare Glare or god rays can manifest in various forms on certain VR headsets. They're usually most noticeable when you have bright text for example on a very dark or black background, and they are basically unwanted internal lens reflections that can make the light appear to stretch out from bright objects or text, or sometimes appear as peripheral movements of light. The Rift CV1 suffered from the first type, and these are the ones that are sometimes referred to as god rays, so these are the ones that stretch out from the central position of the lens and they look like they're reaching out towards you from the text or whatever object it is that you're looking at. Whereas the Valve Index seems to suffer more from the second type of more peripheral light reflections around the edge of the lens as you look around. And these can vary in terms of how much individual users notice them or are bothered by them, and like many of the points on this list, they are very subjective to how they'll affect a user experience. But for me, I find glare very distracting, especially in some of the games that I play, things like Elite Dangerous, where you've got a lot of black background in, in the fact that you're in space, and then there are these bright objects as well. So in the Rift CV1, when I originally played it in that, I did notice these god rays quite heavily in Elite Dangerous and various other experiences as well especially like I say when you've got that bright text on a very dark background. The Vive also had glare issues or god ray issues and these were exacerbated a little bit by the fact that the Fresnel, the concentric rings on the Fresnel lenses were a little bit more visible on the Vive than they were on the CV1 and so you could see the actual circles of the lenses themselves getting these reflections. The Valve Index also suffers from very bad glare issues actually and this is one of the main downsides of the headset and you do notice this peripheral light reflections on the edge of the lens when you look around in certain experiences and it can be distracting and this might be a byproduct of the stacked lens system which is in the index as well so it's one of the main problems with the Valve Index. The Quest 2 has actually lower glare issues at least in my experience and it doesn't suffer from them as much although they are still there in certain experiences. The next aspect I want to touch on is distortion. Now distortion or warping is also something that will probably never be mentioned on a spec sheet simply because it shouldn't happen at all in a VR headset. It's mainly a byproduct of various lens types and problematic distortion correction profiles in VR software. So when the image is created in VR software it does have to distort it slightly in order to counteract the natural distortion of the lenses and sometimes this distortion or distortion profile cannot be correct and you get extra distortion within the headset and it generally looks as if the geometry of the virtual world is shifting as you look around in a way that conflicts with your real life experience and sometimes it can appear as if peripheral movement of objects in the world is too quick as you turn your head. Some people will refer to this as it's almost like looking through a goldfish bowl and that's like an exaggerated version of what it actually is but distortion is a very real problem in certain VR headsets. Pupil Swim is 
is another related aspect of distortion where simple movement of your eyes alone can affect their relative position to the lenses and create a sense of world geometry movement which some people can find distracting. Again, general distortion, warping and pupil swim seems to be highly subjective from person to person. Some people, myself included, are very sensitive to any amount of distortion in VR headsets while others don't seem to notice it or are able to easily ignore it. But for me, distortion is actually a major factor and can make or break a headset. For others, it's not a big problem, but they might be concerned about other aspects of VR headsets which actually don't bother me. So again, this is all very subjective and each person will be more sensitive to certain aspects than others. So next up is binocular overlap, and this is an interesting one. Sometimes it's mentioned in reviews and sometimes on spec sheets, but generally not. And in a vast majority, I don't think I've seen this mentioned in most articles that are reviewing VR headsets or online reviews, or even on the spec sheets when you dive into the more detailed spec sheets on some VR headsets. But there's a great article on Road to VR, which I'll put a link to in the description of this video, which actually describes what binocular overlap is really well. But just quickly, in real life each eye can see quite a high percentage of what the opposite eye can see when ignoring the very limits of your peripheral vision. When applying this to a VR headset we call this binocular overlap and some headsets such as the OG Vive have quite a high percentage of binocular overlap. This means that the left eye and the right eye can both see most of what the other eye can see, still taking into account the stereo separation to retain the 3D image of course. And VR headsets have varying degrees of binocular overlap, some much lower than others in terms of percentage. The Rift CV1 was lower than the Vive and some people actually noticed this and found it distracting, myself included actually, and I couldn't quite put my finger on what it was until I understood binocular overlap a little bit better. And it was something that I could get over, it wasn't, it wasn't a make or break feature of the headset or anything like that, but it was a little bit distracting when I first tried the CV1. Now the advantages for reducing binocular overlap and the reason that manufacturers of VR headsets might choose to do this a little bit is because it can help increase the field of view, although in a slightly inauthentic way I think. So for example if the OG Vive had less binocular overlap, it had less percentage of each eye seeing what the other eye could see, then it could have achieved a higher horizontal field of view because the periphery of each eye can see more even though the opposite eye would be completely excluded from this portion. The disadvantages of having a low binocular overlap is that it creates something called binocular rivalry and it can feel very uncomfortable for some people especially if that percentage is too low. It makes it feel a little bit like looking through two separate tubes rather than through a window into the world and again that's a little bit of an exaggeration in terms of how it feels it's just this slight sense of two separate tubes rather than a window. So binocular rivalry can be a real issue in certain VR headsets it can be less of an issue in terms of percentages for headsets which actually have a larger field of view because the percentage doesn't matter quite so much because it's almost like it naturally cuts off the periphery of each eye anyway. But binocular overlap can be a difficult thing to communicate and you might just have a sense of something feeling off in a VR headset which is very difficult to describe but it doesn't stop it from being quite a significant attribute for some people. As I say for certain people it can actually make or break a VR headset. I've read many many times that people had to move away from the Rift CV1 and over to the Vive even though the difference in percentages actually wasn't that great in terms of binocular overlap for those two headsets and there are plenty of other headsets which have very low binocular overlap and others which do it much better in my opinion so it's something to consider if you can find those statistics on the manufacturer's websites. And finally, I just want to talk very quickly about comfort. Now, this is sometimes mentioned in spec sheets and is usually mentioned in reviews, but this is very subjective once again. Some people might prefer a halo design head strap, while others prefer different kinds of head straps. And weight can also be a factor, but is less of an issue with a good head strap design. And some people may find one head strap more comfortable than others, and it might be completely different for other people. So I did want to just quickly mention comfort. 
So just to conclude this video, in my opinion there are many aspects of VR headsets which are equally important to raw specs, but generally omitted from spec sheets out of convenience. When the Valve Index was first released, nobody realised some of the glare or god ray issues it had based on the spec sheets, and it wasn't until early reviews until this became apparent. But even then, we're basing raw facts on subjective opinions of the reviewers, and this in itself can be flawed. Some people might not be concerned about glare, distortion, distortion or binocular overlap issues, but even if they are and can tell that something isn't quite right, then they might not be able to communicate that effectively in their reviews. In my opinion, wearable technology is so subjective and personal to each user that trying a VR headset before you buy it is becoming more and more important with the rapid innovation of the technology. And I know it's not always possible, but trying a VR headset before purchasing is something I'd always recommend based on so many subjective nuances which might be important to one person, yet disregarded by another. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know what you think about all this in comments. But thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe if you get a chance, and I'll see you next time. Please consider supporting Immerse Robot on Patreon, or joining the Discord, or following me on Twitter, or better yet, all of the above. Links in the description below.